It's another great day with Brian and Tracy. And Jason Aldean right there. Let your boys be country. All right, 4th of July. It'll be here before you know it. And no matter where you are going to be watching those fireworks displays, you can take KSAM with you wherever you go. Of course, if, you, if you're right here in the listening area, just turn on your radio at 9 o'clock that night, and you'll hear a great patriotic salute to America brought to you by Bill Fick Ford. Uh, that'll be a fantastic soundtrack to go along with your fireworks display. But really, if you're in the central time zone of the United States, yep. you can take that KSAM mobile app with you wherever you are, and uh, it works for that as well. Yeah, and you can just download it to your Bluetooth, and then boom, you get it right there on your big, big speakers. Yeah. I mean, I mean, seriously, it doesn't matter where you are anymore. You don't have to be just here in Huntsville to listen to KSAM. Crystal clear fireworks celebration mm -hmm. Right here at KSAM and on your smartphone. Uh, that's coming up July 4th at 9 o'clock. So a happy Independence Day from Bill Fick Ford and 101.7 KSAM. Lenny Wilson and Hang Tight, honey. 101.7 KSAM, your hometown radio station. I'm Carlos Zimmerman. Glad to have you with me on the Midday Show. Your Southeast Texas weather forecast is on the way. Also, Craig Morgan and Post Malone and Morgan Wallen coming up, too. It's really odd to say, but hey, <laughs> it's the world of country music that we're in right now. Well, there's a new report out there that says that people are fighting rising costs by researching so-called vacation dupes. Basically, finding something similar that's cheaper, even if it isn't quite as luxurious. In a poll, 61% of Americans say they'd be interested in a dupe. Now, everyone, not everyone, would broadcast it. 28% of people say they wouldn't reveal that they were doing the light version of another destination. Here's a list of examples of vacation dupes. They include going to the Virgin Islands instead of the Bahamas going to Belfast, Ireland instead of London, or even Liverpool instead of London, going to Memphis instead of Nashville, going to Curacao instead of St. Martin, going to Napa, California instead of Tuscany, Italy, going to Tarpon Springs, Florida instead of the Greek Islands, wow, going to Western Colorado instead of Iceland, going to Letchworth State Park in New York instead of the Grand Canyon, going to Newport, Rhode Island instead of Nice, France, and going to Leavenworth, Washington instead of Bavaria, Germany. There you go. The light versions of those very popular destinations. Alan Jackson, it's midnight in Montgomery. 101.7 K Sam, you're listening to 90s at noon. Coming up, your Southeast Texas weather forecast. Sawyer Brown and Sammy Kershaw, also on the way this hour to of 90s country. Well, a woman online has claimed she filed for divorce, saying, quote, because my husband over tightens all the jar lids. You're kidding me, right? Oh my gosh. Well, she says it may seem like no big deal, but if every jar in the house is over tightened to the point where he needs to be there to open them, then it's so annoying when he isn't around and she can't get anything done. She did confront her husband about it many times and it would get better for a while before slowly becoming an issue again. If he wasn't home, she'd regularly have to open a new jar of something just because she couldn't get the current jar open. One time, when her husband was out of town, she had a neighbor come over and unscrew all the lids for her, and even he couldn't get a couple of them, apparently. He even smashed a glass jar of figs trying to get it open. Well, this is twofold here. One, who just gets a jar of figs? Like, come on, guys. And secondly, really? Divorce? Over a jar of lids? Over jar of lids, I should say? Oh... Boy. Luke Bryan on your hometown radio station, 101.7 KCM. Good afternoon. I am Big Glenn Edwards. Your forecast is coming up uh, in just a few moments. You know, it really is nice to commiserate about things that everyone finds challenging, right? Learning a new language, doing your taxes, and even harvesting fresh coconuts. Well, I tell you what, someone asked the internet, what is something that seems easy to other people, but is difficult for you? And here are some of the best responses that they had. Uh, I'm going to start with number 10 and work our way up. Uh, number 10, cutting in a straight line with scissors. Yeah, I have a problem with that. Number nine, hula hooping. Never going to do it. Number eight, shuffling cards. Yeah, I could do relatively okay with that. How about this? Number seven, rolling my R's. I can't do that. I have tried my entire life. I just can't. I gave up. Uh, number six, parking straight. Yeah, not that difficult. I always back in. Uh, number five, basic navigation. Yes, I am directionally challenged. I'll be the first one to admit it. Uh, number four, basic math. No problem there. Number three, remembering names. Yes, I am terrible at it. Uh, number two, expressing myself in photos or taking selfies. I can't hardly do that. I'm, I'm terrible with it. Oh, and number one, knowing when to jump in and out of conversations or simply Ending conversation. Ashley Cook with your place staying put at number seven in back to back weeks on the top 10 countdown here on 101.7 K sampling today's best country 
and all of your favorites. All right, folks, it's time once again. Say it with me. It's your favorite segment. It's my favorite segment. It's everybody's favorite segment. It's your five random facts of the weekend with a twist. This weekend, we're going to go four facts. Only because number five I didn't feel was interesting enough. So, I made a last minute decision. I made an edit and post. <laughs> we're going four this week. But, like we do every week, we always alternate. Whether we start at number one or number five on the list. Last week we were at five, so this week we start at one. Number one, the summit of Mount Everest, the tallest point on the planet is actually marine limestone, meaning the highest point on Earth was once ocean seafloor, roughly about 470 million years ago. I think if you've been to science class, you kind of figured that one out, but still kind of interesting to, to think about. Number two, there were sheep in Central Park in New York until 1934, when the city had them moved so people would stop eating the sheep during the Great Depression. I mean, I kind of understand it. The game's the game in a sense, but, you know. Number three, the press briefing room in the White House used to be an indoor swimming pool. It was installed in 1933, but Nixon actually had it converted to the press room in 1970, so it had itself almost a 40-year run. And finally on this list, number four on this random facts of the weekend. It's supposed to be five random, but again, made in that in a post. The movie Scream, for all you horror fans, was actually originally going to be called, oddly enough, and ironically enough, Scary Movie. Of course, we all know it ended up being the name of the famous horror movie parody series that would come out every few years, was really popular during the early 2000s especially. But, uh, yeah, that one's kind of interesting. The fact that it was actually going to be called Scary Movie wasn't. But then we ended up getting a scary movie. Yeah, I don't know. It's funny how things work out sometimes, you know? 